Hi, Dave here. This is the second video in Chapter 9. Last chapter, we looked at just basically how does the exception mechanism framework work within Java. We saw the try-catch block. This video, we're going to look at how to create our own exception class. So first, we'll look at, again, what is the exception class itself, which is a root class of all exceptions. And we'll look at the many, many exceptions that already exist. And we'll look at how they are consistently defined and used, with the idea being that we will mimic that consistency in usage. We'll define our own division by zero exception. We'll use it in a simple program with the numerator and denominator. And then we'll wrap up with some guidelines for programmer-defined exceptions. So the exception classes. There are many more exception classes than, than just the single class exception that we used in video one. In fact, there are probably hundreds in the standard Java libraries. If one of those don't fit our needs, we can define our own exception classes, just like we can any other type of class in Java. Now, all of those currently in the Java library have the following properties. They have a constructor that takes a single argument of type string. You know, this simple single argument pretty much just defines what is, what is the actual exception. It's a descriptive message. And the class also has an accessor method, getMessage, that will return the value of that string that was passed as the argument to the constructor. All of our programmer-defined classes should have the same properties. Now, there are numerous, numerous predefined exception classes that come with Java. You know, for example, there's IO exception, and we'll see that with Joel when we talk about Chapter 10. No pointer exception. I know everybody must have gotten that at least, oh, gee, huh, 10, 100, 1,000 times. Uh, no such method exception, file not found exception, number format exception. We see that one quite a bit when we're doing a double dot parse double on a string. Now one thing about a lot of these exceptions, they don't live in java.lang. So you need to go out and look at the Java doc to see where they do live so you can import the appropriate package. So here I've gone out to Java doc and I'm showing the, the root exception class. Now it's rare in that it exists in the java.lang package so you don't have to import it, but you can see the many children that it has. And these children have children and those children have children. So there are many, many, many existing exceptions out there. Most likely there's one already written that will do what you want. So before you start writing one, perhaps you'll look to see what's available. So the predefined exception class, exception, it's the root class for all exceptions. In every exception class defined by Oracle or even the ones that we create must be a descendant of the class exception. Now, although the exception class can be used directly in a class or program, we pretty much should be using our own, or more likely using those predefined specialized exceptions defined by Java that are descendants of the exception class. We'd like to be using a very specialized class so we can target exactly what went wrong and take corrective action. The class exception is in the java.lang package, and as I said before, requires no import. And the exception class has a get message that everyone uses. And this get message pretty much returns the string that was passed to the constructor when the exception instance was created. So here we created the exception with string argument as a string passed to the exception constructor. In the actual catch block itself, we see e.get message, where get message is just an accessor for that string. So I'm kind of saying that again here. Each exception has a string instance variable that contains some message. And the string typically is the reason for the exception. 
In the previous slide, I showed string argument as an argument to the exception constructor. And so this is the string that we'll get back if we call e.getMessage. Now, when we call the throw operator, we can throw an exception object of any exception class, right? Or instances of any of its children, grandchildren, any descendant. So instead of using a predefined class, exception classes can be programmer defined. These can be tailored specifically to carry the precise kinds of information needed in the catch block. And we can have different types of excep exceptions to identify different exceptional situations so we can take very specific action depending on the exact thing that went wrong. And you're going to be creating your own exception class in an upcoming homework. Now every exception class to be defined, it must be a derived class of some already defined exception class. It can be a derived class directly of the exception class itself or any of the exception class's descendants to include any programmer defined exception class. The most important members are the constructors. And they must behave appropriately with respect to the variables and methods inherited from the base class. And oftentimes, there are no other members except those inherited directly from the base class. So let's go create one. Here we're going to create a division by zero exception. And we're going to extend the exception class directly. We're going to provide a zero R constructor. And this is going to call the one R constructor of its parent exception and give it the rationale for this type of exception. And that's going to be division by zero. We're also going to support a one R message so someone else can call a new division by zero exception and pass a more specific or defining message. And then we'll just turn around and call super with that message. Now here is a simple program called division demo first version. And in the main method, we're going to ask for a numerator, ask for a denominator, and then print out the result. Now, after we ask for the numerator and denominator, we're first going to check, does the denominator equal zero? Right? We can't allow division by zero. If it is equal to zero, we're going to throw an instance of the exception class that we just defined. And here we didn't pass it any argument. So going back to the previous slide, we should see get back for a get message division by zero. If we do throw the new division by zero exception, down here in the catch block, we'll catch it, and we're going to print out division by zero. If the denominator was not zero, we'll figure out the quotient, we'll print out the quotient, and skip the catch block. So the exception object characteristics. The two most important things about an exception object are its type. We just had a type division by zero exception and the message it carries, division by zero. The message is sent along with the exception object as an instance variable. And we can get the message back by calling the accessor get message. So here are some guidelines. Exception classes may be programmer defined but every such class must be a derived class, right? We're using inheritance now of an already existing exception class. The class exception can be used as the base class unless another exception class would be more suitable. You should have at least two constructors, a no R constructor and a what R constructor. The exception class should allow for the fact that the method get message is inherited. We'd like to support that to be consistent with all the Java exception classes. And in my opinion, 99% of the time, I would rather pick an already existing specialized exception class before I write my own. Right? Why, why write your own? There's one that will already do the job. A couple other guidelines. Preserve get message. A lot of people are using it. It's kind of an expected method to be able to call. 
Uh, this behavior should be preserved in all programmer defined exception classes. A, the constructor must be included having a string parameter whose body begins with the call to super. The call to super must use the parameter as its argument. You should also have a no while constructor to be included whose body also begins with the call to super, but the call to super should use a default string such as division by zero. So creating our own exception class is pretty simple. In video three, we will learn about the catch or declare rule.